Welcome, Norse fans, to Norse and Around, part of the Grueling Truth Radio Network. As you know, NKU is going to the big dance. We're discussing who they're playing, where they're playing, when they're playing. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Alex. Tell us uh, who's Northern got. All righty. So Northern Kentucky is going to be placed in the South region. They will be a 15 seed, and they will play Friday, March 17th, against the UK Wildcats. And uh, I think I heard the times mm-hmm. next to them, but I'm not completely sure. But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you got me on that one. I'm not sure of the, uh, the game times, but I am sure of the days. And that, of course, is going to be on Friday. So, yeah, Friday is a huge day in uh, Norse history. Uh, gosh, could be bigger than uh, the Vikings back in the day. <laughs> I'm going to talk about Norse. But, uh, yeah, shoot. Uh, kind of let's uh, get a breakdown of UK, and then we'll break down Northern, and we'll see, you know, what we think uh, could happen. All right. So with the UK, obviously they're very strong every year. They're very dominant. They're very powerful. Usually they win the SEC tournament every year. Uh, so Noble losses on uh, Kentucky's side. They lost to UCLA um, early in the season, and they also lost to Louisville at Louisville. They lost to UCLA. I want to note that was at home, so that was a home loss. Uh, lost to Louisville in a close one. They also lost to Tennessee on the road. They lost to Kansas at home. They lost to Florida on the road. So they've had a few losses. Uh, and throughout the season, there's been some teams who have given them a little bit of trouble, uh, including Missouri. Um, Georgia gave them trouble recently. And uh, into the tournament as well, uh, Kentucky was given a little bit of trouble, as you can tell. They had some close games, uh, 171-60 against Georgia. They beat Alabama only 79-74. to And, of course, today they had beating Arkansas 82-65 to to win the SEC tournament. And then, of course, Friday, correction, 9.30 p.m. Eastern time, they will play Northern Kentucky at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. So, um, personally, and I I, want to mention another thing I meant that I've noticed in their schedule here. Uh, Kentucky has also played some of our fellow Horizon League members. Um, Back on December 7th, they played Valpo at home in an 87-63 victory. And they also played Cleveland State on November 23rd. That was a 101 to 70 uh, victory as well. Uh, yeah, those those do concern me a bit there. Because <laughs> after all, Valpo, we end up uh, splitting the series with Valpo, so we're pretty evenly matched with them, I would say. And then yep. Cleveland State. Actually, I think uh, we also split with Cleveland State, didn't we? Yeah, I believe you're right. Yeah, so we're uh, we're good enough to uh, you know home and home with those type of guys, and they lost by thirty. Oh, yeah, that uh, you know that's not our optimistic thought. And the other thing that concerns me is UK the teams that they did lose to. You mentioned UCLA. Well, UCLA has great shooters. UCLA yes. has I don't know what four or five uh, Cole Murrays basically on their team. Where we have Cole Murray, you know. Uh, and, of course, Drew has had some good games from outside. A couple of the other guys have had big games from outside. But it just seems that's going to be the area that's going to hurt us the most. And free throws, because, you know, free throws are always tough. But yeah. UK is not a world beater at free throws either. So that would help us. The thing that UK is with the one-and-done players and all that – the regular season is like their preseason. When the conference tournament starts and get in the NCAA tournament, that's when the season starts, I guess you can say, for them. That's when they start to click. I've noticed that year after year since Calipari took over there. You know, I lived in Lexington for five years, so you know, I was listening to that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I noticed that they, they click right when the tournament begins. You know, they just start to play hot. They start to get hot. You know, hard to say. Maybe they do, maybe they don't sometimes. It's just hard to tell. So, yeah, we have a really tough opponent on our hands, but never say never. I agree with you. You know, things have happened. I mean, after all, uh, former team, uh, when we were in the Atlantic Sun Conference, Florida Gulf Coast, yep. and of course ended up upsetting uh, Duke. So, yeah, things have happened. I'm yeah, not saying it's impossible. 
it's just that the matchup concerns me. You know, and it's not one of those where it's a knee-jerk reaction where it's like, oh, my, it's UK. No, that that's not the part that worries me. It is the part that one of the few things that UK is uh, susceptible to is shooting, and we have more of a physical interior, tra- you know, fast transition game like they do. And our other concern, of course, is um, they're going to play the two halves, right, unfortunately, for this game? Uh, what's that? I was uh, semi-repetitive but uh, redundant question. They're playing uh, two halves for this game, unfortunately, right? Yeah, and uh, yeah. I want to bring up... Because, unfortunately, that's one of those things we're usually really great in the first half. second half... Mm-hmm. Has been kind of our uh, our difficulty there. Yeah, and I will say, NKU's been the way they have shot lately. They've done great. Um, an example I can go back to was about five six years ago, and I know this because my dad's a Mizzou grad. Missouri was like a high. I think they're like a two seed, and you know they came out. They played great against Norfolk State. Norfolk State beat them because they shot well. You know, you know Mizzou had a great game, but Norfolk State just had a better game. You know, they just they just kept sinking those threes. So, you know, with NKU, they've shot well in the tournament, and I and I said they would win the Horizon League because of the way they've been playing as of lately, and it showed. So, as a matter of fact, you know, if Northern Kentucky could come out firing on all cylinders, you never know. They could. Um, and the, the funny part is, say Northern Kentucky gets further into the tournament, they beat Kentucky, you know, they will play the winner against Wichita State or Dayton. So they could play Dayton potentially. And then Cincinnati is actually within our little section here. Say Cincinnati, the sixth seed, the only way we end up playing them is if we shock the world and make the Elite Eight. Now, stuff like that has happened before. As you mentioned, Florida Gulf Coast, they made the Sweet 16. There's been moments like that. Um, so, yeah, Northern's got a tough opponent, but I, I think they could take on Kentucky. And, you know, as for someone who's – you know, and I hate to sound biased. I've you know rooted against Kentucky because I lived in Louisville for ten years. But <laughs> Kentucky's a very good team, and I respect that. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we're just going to break down a couple of the numbers I think are interesting. Uh, let's see. So, on um, shooting for Northern for this season, they are. Uh, it's not by percentage. Uh, it's by uh, we're 900 out of 1900 shots made. So okay, there it is. There's a percentage. So about 45% from the field, and we're about 35% from three pointers. So unless we're getting uh, the Listermans or we're getting Paul Cluxton uh, coming back to shoot a couple threes for us, I, I like your optimism. And actually, I like that uh, that crazy delusion there, talking about Elite Eight and playing UC and all that, which we'll, we'll do a tournament breakdown in just a sec. But I just, wow. Yeah, I mean, and, and I hope you're right. But, uh, yeah. And then the other part that worries me, of course, is free throw percentage. We're, you know, like 67%. So even if we are able to keep up with them, can we keep up with them from the free throw line? Yeah. And, you know. Yes. Yeah, and then of course, uh, I mean, UK is known for great D. We're averaging 13 turnovers a game. Uh, so I don't know. There's some things, you know, things we can build on, and things that could, you know, work out. Uh, any final thoughts about the matchup itself? Well, um, all I can say is to every single student, alumni, faculty, go to the game. You know, I think there will be a lot of animosity at the game. You know, um, I think there will be some tension between, you know, because obviously this is a way to create a new rival, you know, between NKU and UK. And I think uh, the atmosphere will be amazing at the game. And uh, I'm I'm certainly going because it's in Indianapolis, and uh, I'm just excited for it. Excellent. I agree with you. There is some potential, you know, try to gradually start something there. However, um, shoot. And, of course, the nice thing is things have dramatically improved since when I was a student back in 06. But, uh, yeah, when I was a student, 
and you'd be walking across campus, you would see way more blue than you would see yellow. Unfortunately, back then, of course, we didn't have as good of merchandising rights or just as good as merchandise. So pretty much uh, everything, the majority of the students would either be wearing blue for you know who or wearing uh, red for UC. Uh, it was very limited of our product uh, available, though, so that might have factored in. So yeah, I mean, the people in marketing up in Northern have done a great job. They're getting the word out there. They're uh, you know getting the fans involved, and I agree with you. There is uh, there's some improvement there. Maybe a little rivalry or spark. Yeah, I was there when the team got home. And I was there. I recorded on my Facebook, Facebook Live, and it was just cool just seeing everybody, and it, it was just an amazing thing to see. Excellent. Okay, so let's uh, do a little bit of breakdown. We'll do at least the first round. Yeah, we'll do the uh, we'll do the first round of the tournament. So let's see the playing games. Tuesday we got Mountain St. Mary versus New Orleans. Mount St. and New Orleans. Yes. I will it's confess St. Mary, Mount St. Mary, because my first thought was to go, yeah, St. Mary, they're good. Oh, wait, Mount St. Mary. <laughs> yeah. Um, Record-wise, I'm going to go with New Orleans on this one. Um, I don't know much about the two teams, um, I will be honest, but I think uh, New Orleans will win that one of uh, the first four games. Cool. I'm going to go the other way just because, yeah, same thing. I know nothing about them, and I'm uh, basing it on nothing on that one. Uh, but the next one actually is a good matchup, the Kansas State-Wake Forest because those were two of the teams that everyone is upset with right now. If you go on out there on social media, at least the people in New York, I mean, I don't know if the rest of the country really cares as much, but uh, if you're up there by Syracuse, you really hate these two teams right now. Yeah. Because most people feel that these are the two that took them out of their spot, either them or the Providence, USC. So between the two, or between those four teams, they feel at least one of them should have been cut, and Syracuse and Jim Beheim should be in it. Uh, so Kansas State versus Wake Forest, who do you got? Um, two good basketball conferences. The Big 12 is great. The ACC is very dominant, very strong. However, I'm going to go with Kansas State just because I know they're a, deep, a good team every year. And, um, yeah, I think I'm going with Kansas State on this one. And I'm going to go the other way because the people with the uh, – the worst record, I feel, in these type of games, they're just hungrier. Plus, like you said, Wake, I mean, playing in the ACC, excellent conference. Actually, Kansas State in the Big 12 did have a pretty good uh, postseason run. So there's, mm -hmm. you know, arguments to be made on both sides. So we'll go with NC Central, UC Davis. All right. So uh, NC Central is 25 and 8. UC Davis is 22-12. This is for the 16th season. And the winner will play Kansas. Um, again, don't know much about the two teams. Um, Record-wise, I'll go with NC Central. Okay. And we'll just keep this pattern going because I'll go to UC Davis. Okay, now this one interests us. Providence, USC. USC had some big wins this year. They did beat UCLA, which beat Kentucky. Yep. So they they can beat good teams. The problem is they slept on some of the worst teams in the conference and end up losing to them. But yeah. in the tournament, you play good teams. So I'm going to go with USC. Same. I'm going to go with USC on this one. Good deal. Okay, so we got through the first round or the, uh, the playing games. So we'll do... Villanova, Mount St. Joe's, or Mount St. Mary, or New Orleans. Let's we'll just say Villanova at that point, because let's be honest. Any of the playing teams you think are going to beat Villanova? No. <laughs> to be uh, honest, no. no uh, I got to see them live this year. They were so impressive. Uh, that one star player there, Smart, he is very, he is very talented, and just he, he's all what round. Uh, Good, great player. I mean, he's one of those players that should be up for like a John Wooden award because he, yeah. he yeah, he's going to make that impact in the next level. So let's see, Wisconsin, Virginia Tech. What do you think? 
Now, the eight or nine games are always the toughest to pick because, you know, they're eight or nine scenes, and you're just like, you know, both teams are, I guess you could say, are equally matched. Two decent yeah. basketball teams here, uh, Wisconsin from the Big Ten, Virginia Tech from the ACC. However, with this one, I think I'm going with Wisconsin. Yeah, because they had a good run in the tournament. I agree with you. Yeah, because the first time there, I was getting Virginia and Virginia Tech confused, which will be in the next game. And I was thinking, I was like, oh, wait, they got such good defense. I should go with that team that's got the really great defense. No, that's Virginia. So I agree with you. I'm going to go with Wisconsin. And, of course, that gives you the answer to the next one, Virginia Tech versus UNC Wilmington. I'm going with Virginia because they play damn good defense. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Very good defense. I saw them play Louisville back in December. It was right after Louisville beat Kentucky. And I tell you, Virginia gave them fits. They were just quick, great defense. I think Virginia could um, I think Virginia could give a good threat to the tournament. Yeah, because, I mean, Virginia, of course, uh, would play the winner out of Florida, East Tennessee State. I'm pretty much in agreement there, Florida. Um, Florida. I'll go with yeah. Florida on this one. Well, yeah, I was going to say, you're going to be contrarian and go East Tennessee State? Wow. I was going to say, uh, more likely to sing the song from Smoking the Band at the East Bound and Town. Uh, let's see, SMU versus the winner of the Providence USC game. Like we said before, USC is a good team, so to probably them playing SMU. Uh, I did get to see SMU play UK, or UC a couple times this year, once at home and then once on the road. Uh, ooh. Yeah, they totally played in the uh, American Athletic Championship. SMU did win that game. Yeah, they won it uh, pretty outright, actually. So, oh, that's a tough one. I'm going to go uh, USC, even though SMU has had a great year. Uh, they deserve better. Um, actually, I would have figured they might have been better than a six seed. Uh, I want to figure they might have been a five, because if UC got the sixth, SMU gets a sixth, but SMU would beat them in the conference, and they beat them in the tournament. So I don't get why they're on the same line, but whatever. Uh, Let's see, Baylor, New Mexico State, same thing. Baylor, tough defense, just a really good program. But the problem is with Baylor, it was the start of the year. They did excellent. The end of the season... You know, the conference tournament and all, uh, not as great as we'd like. So, yeah, and going into the term that way is yeah. not necessarily a good sign. And New Mexico State 28 and 5. Yeah, so we're going to, I'm saying Lobos are shocking. Yeah, I think upset. New Mexico yep. State here. Let's see. So we have South Carolina Marquette. Hmm. South Carolina from the SEC. Marquette's always been a decent team out of the Big East. Yeah, I was going to say, it's hard to go wrong with a Big East team. Uh, Marquette's got that little fella. I feel bad. I can't remember. I want to say it's Ward Jr. Uh, I should remember the name because he almost landed on me. Uh, I was at the uh, Marquette Xavier game, and unfortunately he was injured in the first, or injured in the game where they played at Xavier, and Hey, they still have beaten Xavier pretty soundly. They got a really tough team. They had a couple interior players. So I'm going with Marquette. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I'm going Marquette with this one. Well, uh, Duke, anything to say about Troy? Duke's Duke. I've seen Duke get upset in the tournament every now and then, but I don't think – I think they'll beat Troy. I think they'll win that. I agree with you. Yeah, because like you said, I mean, we said at the beginning, Florida all Coast beat them. And then there was, uh, gosh, I forget the other one who, I want to say Wichita, but it wasn't Wichita. But another team ended up beating them. So, yeah, they lost, you know, shoot two 15 games. Just can't see it happening again. So, yeah. switching down to the West, Gonzaga, South Dakota State. Gonzaga versus the Bunnies. The Jack Roberts. <laughs> So uh, I got Gonzaga, um, of course. You know, thirty-two and one record. Uh, I, I've said in the previous show. I said that they are probably the one seed that could get ups. Oh yeah. And I say that because I don't know how good their conference is. 
besides Gonzaga. You got Gonzaga and you got St. Mary's. They're also in the same yeah. time. They're also in the same bracket, which is interesting. But yeah, they're they're a tough team. So uh, yeah, of course Gonzaga is going to win that. Uh, once again, the eight nine matchups. They're going to be the best matchups on the first round. Northwestern Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt has had a really great year in the SEC. I mean, it's one of both of those two teams is one that you're like, gosh, I'm so proud of them. They're usually the smart kids that don't do well in sports, and they're actually doing well in sports. So it's nice to see. Know. Vanderbilt's pretty decent, generally. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm just thinking of their football because, good Lord, we even, <laughs> we even beat them at football. I mean, UK beats them at football, so that's pretty bad. Uh, I always said we like Northern beats in the football. That'd be funny. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess the River Monsters uh, could have could have taken them. Yeah. No one had any eligibility, but they could have taken them. Yeah. So who you got? Obviously, Northwestern's going to have a lot of excitement. This is apparently, from what I've heard, the first ever time they're playing in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. Which yes. you would think, what really? So yeah. Yeah. You know, I'll go with Northwestern here. They're going to be really excited. They're going to be pumped. They're going to have a lot of energy for this. <laughs> yeah, it means more to them. And now, hopefully it's not one of those where they're just happy to be there, but I agree with you. I think, uh, say Northwestern. we got Notre Dame and Princeton. Who you got? Uh, if I remember correctly, Princeton actually went undefeated in conference play. Um, with the Notre Dame, they're very good. They're very- yeah, Notre Dame gave a good game to Duke the other day. Uh, they're a bunch of senior-driven players. You know, Princeton, usually when they win in the tournament, it's usually when they beat those young underclassmen players uh, mm-hmm. because you know, they're not as focused or as well-organized. Well, the problem is for Princeton, Notre Dame is the same thing, except for more athleticism. So Notre Dame is Notre Dame's going to win there. Uh, we got West Virginia, Bucknell, uh, West Virginia, Easily, I would say. West Virginia's a darn good team. Uh, they kicked our, kicked Northern's head in earlier this year. Um, yep. And Northern does have an uh, exhibition win against them, so we're going to bring that up until we beat somebody else. Uh, that's a bigger name. Uh, Maryland, Maryland Xavier, we got uh, Maryland's great team this year. Xavier's had such hardship, such injuries. And still, I mean, a great record. That's the crazy part. Is you look at Xavier and you're like 21 and 13, and we are what are we? We're 24 and 10. So basically, we're about the same record. And look at Xavier is a complete disaster because they were expected to possibly win the tournament. I mean, they just go into the season just such such expectations. That's why I'm picking Maryland to win because, unfortunately, the players, due to either injuries or just feeling like, eh, you know what, we're not, we're, this isn't going to be our thing anyway, so I don't think they're going to, I don't want to say they're not going to go all out, but Maryland's going to see a bigger path for their future, so I'm going with Maryland. What's your thoughts? I'm going with Maryland just because Xavier's really beat up. They've had injuries, and, uh, you know, I just think Xavier will get everything they've got but I think in the end, Maryland's going to win. Florida State, Florida Gulf Coast. You know, I want to go crazy with this one. Florida State's a good team, but don't ever count out Florida Gulf Coast. I mean, we saw what they did in 2013. Exactly. Point, set record. Yep. I kind of yes. want to win towards the Gulf Coast. I see your point. But I'm going to go rational. I'm going Florida State. Uh, we got St. Mary versus VCU. That's another one of those matchups that just both teams are just solid. Uh, they're not one of those teams that you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to turn on ESPN tonight to watch this game. But, you know, the, the experts would be like, no, that's the game you want to watch because that's going to be the better game. That should be huge. Uh, I mean, VCU's had past experiences in the tournament. They've done well. St. Mary. Yeah. So, of course, none of those players play for him anymore. So it's hard to base anything on that at all. I'm yeah. saying Mary's because you know they've had they've had at least the games against Gonzaga to play against big names. Uh, let's see, Arizona, North Dakota State, or North Dakota. I, actually, I think I saw North Dakota play twice this year. 
uh, against Xavier and against uh, Northern. Again, back-to-back games. Um, so I'm easily going to Arizona State. So, oh, what else we got? Actually, I wonder. I haven't seen Lehigh in there yet. Lehigh, sh- it's a shame they're not because they were pretty good. We saw them play earlier this season. Hopefully, they'll be in the NIT. So going to the next bracket, Kansas uh, versus it doesn't matter because it's Kansas. Uh, yeah. Miami, Michigan State. Actually interviewed a former Michigan State alum the other day. Uh, um, Kaylin Lucas. Uh, he now plays with Erie uh, Erie Bayhawks, and he's doing quite well with it. So Miami, Florida versus Michigan State. What are your thoughts? Um, Michigan State has always been well coached. Tom is a great coach. Um, Same here. You can't go against Izzo, so they're going to win. Iowa State, Nevada. Mm. Um, you know, I think Nevada will give them trouble. I think this could be a potential upset alert, but I think I think the folks up in Ames, Iowa, I think they're going to win this one. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, it it is one of those games that normally in the past you would say, yeah, this is where the upset happens. Uh, Purdue, Vermont. Vermont's actually the one I'm predicting for the upset over Purdue. Yeah. I haven't, you know, haven't really been impressed by Purdue. Uh, I mean, most of the other Big Ten teams that are in here have had really nice years, and they don't have a bad record. It's just they didn't they didn't overwhelm you either defensively or offensively. Then they're solid. Yeah, I think Vermont. I'll go upset in this one. Creighton, Rhode Island. Rhode Island's my pick. Uh, Rhode Island going into the year, really good team. I want to say they played uh, to play in the, or played UC and uh, UC UK and actually gave them a pretty good game. I remember hearing something about that. So I'm going to pick them over Creighton, even though Creighton's not a bad team. Yeah. We got Oregon, Iona, Oregon. Yeah. Michigan, old uh, Oklahoma State. Michigan. Yeah, Michigan. Actually, that's the thing, though. Until they're uh, near a plane wreck, it just sparks something in them. I mean, it, you set them on that huge run in the tournament, which the nice yeah. thing is, depending on how or when you get to the uh, get up there on Friday, you might get to see the Michigan old uh, Oklahoma State. Or was it Odom? Odom State. That or Louisville playing Jacksonville State. I uh, know. That'd be cool. Yeah, I was going to say, like, we really need to uh, go too much into that. Louisville's going to win, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, North Carolina, Texas Southern, North Carolina. Uh, actually, I think, oh, I did see Texas Southern play UC this year. They weren't bad. Uh, they weren't great. But they were not going to meet North Carolina. Arkansas, Seton Hall, once again, 8-9 matchups are always good. Arkansas mm-hmm. got to the finals of the conference tournament. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go against them for no apparent reason against Arkansas. All right. I'll go with, uh, I'll go with Seton Hall. Cool. Let's see. Minnesota, Middle Tennessee. Middle Tennessee has actually had a really good year this year. Yeah. Um, Last year yeah. they pulled a massive upset. And I think yeah. they could do it. Yeah, I'm agreeing with you. Minnesota's, uh, I mean, they've had a good season. They really have. I mean, in going into the tournament, they were looking good. Um, so, yeah, I agree with you. Middle Tennessee, Butler, Winthrop. Butler's damn good. I hate to admit it because they won't do Winthrop intros. But Butler is a pretty damn good team. Uh, Cincinnati, Kansas Cincinnati versus the winner of the 11 game. Actually, it's kind of funny. Both uh, Cincinnati and Kansas State, ex um, ex Huggins schools. Cincinnati, though, better team. I mean, they're just they got depth, and if their players are you know doing the right thing, they'll beat them. So Cincinnati's going to win, in my opinion. Who do you got? I got Cincinnati as well. Okay, UCLA, Kent State, UCLA, unless they're just not hitting their shots. And actually, that's how 
in my opinion, you see not that we're going to go into the second round tonight or anything crazy like that, but how you see will probably beat UCLA. Because if UCLA isn't hitting their shots, Cincinnati's got pretty good defense. I mean, they're not Virginia, uh, but they're they're darn good defense as well. Let's see, Dayton, Wichita State. That's another one of those matchups that's huge. Going to be an excellent one. So. Uh, it's going to be a great game. Yeah. Wichita State. Yeah, that's one worth watching. So, and then. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Wichita, and then of course the game that we actually care about, the most important one, uh, UK versus NKU. You believe there's a possibility, which I I think is admirable, and I think that makes you a good NKU student. Uh, on the other hand, I'm old and jaded, and oh gosh, I mean I just can't see them really. I mean if they keep it close, I'm happy. Uh, I mean, just the basing it, and I know it's wrong to base it on teams we played and they played, but basing it on mutual opponents, they've kicked the heads in of those mutual opponents, and those mutual opponents, some of them beat us, some of them were close with us. Ah, yeah, I, I have to go UK, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm going to be biased and go with NKU. <laughs> well, hey, I'm happy. I, you know, shoot, you know uh, maybe, you know, That'll be the extra points that'll help you win if you end up getting that one right. So, because uh, I can't imagine too many people outside of NKU are gonna are gonna make that prediction. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's our coverage of the first uh, couple games in the tournament. Not first couple games, but the first uh, round in the playing round. And uh, next week, wait, next week we have already had the second round. Okay. Well, anyway, next week we're gonna do the. Uh, the regionals, and actually, you know, we might, no, nah, we'll be too busy this week. So I said next week we'll do the uh, the regionals and cover that, so we'll see the results that we got. We can we might even go back and check and see if we actually got them right. But anyway, uh, Alex, any final thoughts? It's going to be fun. I love March Madness. I love the tournament. And uh, go Norse. Let's go dancing. Definitely. Norse, no matter what, they've already made us proud, and uh, we just, you know, hope uh, they can keep it going. So for James Ernest, Alex Gray, and Norse and Around, part of the Growing Truth Radio Network, we'd like to thank you for listening to our show, and go Norse.